Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get great bird photos very quickly and very easily. So let's go on with it. Always you can tell it's cold. So for this all you're going to need is an area where birds are used to getting fed, a bird table or you can even use the ground and then different bits and bobs that you can find around a park or around a woodland or even in your garden. There's quite a few videos that I've seen on YouTube that show you how to get bird on a stick type photos, which essentially means that you've got a perch that's set up right next to a hanging feeder. And it is a really good way of getting, getting nice photos of birds on a stick, but I thought this was a little bit different and probably more accessible because like I said, you can just use the ground. Now, all I need to do is go and find a few interesting things to put on the bird table. I've already put a bit of bird seed out, and then we put that on the bird table, wait for the birds to land on it, and then take the photo. So, a few things to keep in mind. Try and make sure there's only one food source, because that means that the birds will only come to where you want them to go. And try and keep your background as clean as possible. That essentially means just try and make sure that whatever's behind what you're photographing is as far away as possible so that it's blurred out and doesn't distract from your subject within the photo. I'll just show you what I've got planned for the first shot. It's this lovely mossy log. Um, all I've done is placed the food in front. I'll be behind there in the hide. And then I'm gonna wait for the birds to land on here before getting to the food and then take the photos. So I'm gonna get in the hide and we'll see what we get. So a few things about um, the setup and camera settings. Number one, use a tripod because you can essentially just keep the camera in exactly the same place. Number two, make sure that you're already focused on where you want the birds to land because that way you're not faffing around, missing focus or anything. Number three, shoot with the widest aperture possible, so that's the lowest F number. Because A, that brings in more light into the camera, meaning we can use a higher shutter speed. And B, it gives you a shallower depth of field, meaning the background's going to be more out of focus, allowing there to be more emphasis on your subject. Well, there's the first one done. Here's the next one. I'm absolutely freezing, so this is probably gonna be the last one that I do, but I can also show you a few photos from what I've done previously. But for now, let's get back in the hide and see what we can get.
Well, there you go. It really doesn't get much easier than that in bird photography. Hopefully you can take some inspiration, go and create your own setups, go and do this sort of thing in your garden. Photography wise, it's a great way to learn the craft. You can try different settings, different techniques, shooting into the light, shooting with the light behind you. Really, it's incredibly controlled because you control everything apart from the bird's behavior. But you control the perch, the food source, where all of that goes. So yeah, go out and, uh, and give that a try. It's also really rewarding from just a wildlife watching point of view. You get to spend time with possibly more of the more common bird species that maybe you might overlook sometimes, but they really are beautiful. I mean, I got incredibly lucky today. Where I'm photographing today is by far and away the best place I've ever been to for nut hatches. And I know that in a lot of places, they're not that easy to photograph. But then also today, it was the first time I've ever seen, let alone photograph, a willow tit. I'm gonna say it's a willow tit. It could be a marsh tit. There'll be better bird watchers than me that are watching this video, so feel free to correct me. But yeah, even without those subjects, it's just a lovely way to spend time with wildlife, by yourself and your camera. So that'll be it for this quick video today. Hopefully the next time I speak to you, I'll have defrosted and thawed and my fingers will work again so I can take more photos. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.